Hey, welcome back. And uh, for those that randomly just found me, thanks. Uh, I'm happy to have you guys with me today. We're going to talk uh, just about infections again, uh, a little bit more. I got a question. Um, I'll just put it up. Hey, Doc, what's your preferred antibiotic choice for patients that are um, allergic to amoxicillin or penicillin for larger surgeries? Yeah, I mean, I think this person obviously just wants a quick answer. I mean, yeah, penallergic, Avalox, moxifloxacin, um, good choice generally for, for what we do, oral sinus, that kind of stuff. Uh, but larger surgeries, is this for pre-op antibiotics, post-op? Is this for an infection? It, it, the question doesn't have all the information, right? So we're going to kind of just to a little bit deeper dive into, again, you know, antibiotic selection. I know this is super dry, but I'm going to try not to make it super dry. So let's see what we got. So this is, um, you know, from last time, you know, I do go to up to date quite a bit. Um, it's a great resource for medical information, antibiotics, drugs, things like that. Um, so this one is basically saying, you know, why clindamycin sucks. Um, and it's continuously updated. So again, from up to date, they're saying clindamycin is not recommended for initial empiric therapy due to resistance among, um, streptococcus, like strep malaria. If any dental student is listening or recent dental grad or dental hygienist and so forth, you've definitely heard of strep malaria, right? Commensal organisms in the mouth um, also cause infections, right? 20 to 30% resistance of that group of strep with clinda. It's pretty big. And also anaerobic bacteria, like 38% resistance with clinda. Um, so yeah, that's again, reasons why I don't use it for bigger infections. Um, anything that I'm, I'm a, you know, I think they may spread, you know, I try not to use clindamycin. Um, but for a general prophylactic, you know, zit, sure. Yeah. Um, and so what do, what can you use? So again, this is from up to date. Um, so some other options, if you can't use augmentin, which is the best thing usually, or penicillin, which is also augmentin, but you know penicillin plus something else. I generally, like I said before, I go to Avalox, which is moxifloxacin, 400 milligrams, uh, sorry, POQ day, and generally like seven to 10 days or resolution of clinical symptoms, basically, or infl inflammation. Um, you can also use a second or third generation cephalosporins. Um, so they're recommending here cefiroxime, 500 milligrams, BID, or ceftonir, 300 milligrams, BID plus metronidazole. Again, when you're adding multiple antibiotics on different, like metronidazole is usually dosed three times a day. Um, and so like you're taking multiple pills at different times that, for compliance issues for some people, that's hard. The other option, like I said, is Avalox, which is one pill once a day. And compliance issues, um, the best, right? Um, and it works well. Um, so quick answer, long answer, there you go. And generally up to date is saying, you know, you want to Continue these antibiotics for, for as long as the clinical inflammation is present. Generally, 7, day, seven to 14 days is, is normal. Um, you should see a turnaround, you know, if they're working and if you need drainage or something of the abscess with that, um, you should see a turnaround probably three to four days. So that's good. And again, so why Clinda is, is not so great sometimes or a lot of times, uh, you know, it doesn't cover those, those strep groups like we said before, uh, anaerobic bacteria and malaria as well. This this guy, um, you can see the significant facial swelling. Um, he got worse on clindamycin um, as an outpatient and ended up, you know, having surgical drainage with multiple um, empiric antibiotics. IV then went to oral and got better after drainage. So, yeah, he was tried. He they tried to manage him as an outpatient with clinda, and it and it actually did did worse for him. This lady, you know, uh, vestibular abscess, basically an abscess in the mouth. It's localized around the teeth, and then. After a while, not getting better as an outpatient, started getting facial swelling from it, right? So now it's spreading from the side of the mandible. And then at some point, if it's not stopped, it'll go to the neck. It can go to the other side of the neck, and then you have a bigger problem, right? Um, another patient here, this just started from one tooth, uh, upper left canine, uh, developed a canine space uh, infection that spread to the buccal space and then just kept going until we got it under control. Um, but yeah, you can see just one tooth can cause significant, significant um, swelling and pain. You know, this is another case. Try to try to be managed as an outpatient. This this um, went into multiple spaces, and I have a pretty deep dive into this case. You know, somewhere on my Instagram and, and YouTube and stuff. But buccal space, temporal space, spastic space, everything. And which is interesting on this case, like on 
day 21, after the huge abscess was treated, all he was left with was this little seroma, um, not even an abscess, uh, just lateral to his eye, which I just drained really quickly in the clinic. Um, and it was, there wasn't pus in there. It's just so much swelling had occurred over a short amount of time that all this f you know, fluid needed somewhere to go. And it, their normal pathways were, were blocked. So he just developed this little seroma. So somewhere on there on my feed, you'll see me draining that. Um, it's just yellow fluid that comes out of there. It's not pus. And you can see, you know, again, it's it's multiple spaces, you know, and this is how fast and aggressive these infections can be. So if you're on the wrong antibiotic and it's getting worse, you're actually creating a bigger problem in a lot of cases because now you have this resistant strain. And I'm just going to close, close with this, um, this case here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this case here, uh, it's interesting. So a, a person like, you know, like this can have multiple teeth with, with localized inflammation, swelling, calculus buildup even, right? Um, but for some people, this just kind of stays in the mouth. It doesn't spread to the neck. I can't predict when or if that's going to happen, and nobody really can. But you can see people can live with a lot of decay and, and localized inflammation without showing it um, outside the mouth. Again, for most people, you know, you definitely want to get treated. Um, don't want that to happen. Thank you.